When some people think of a chaplain, they think of someone that you call maybe to, to say a prayer with the patient or to let them know when there's a death or there's a, another critical issue going on. Uh, but Jeff is more than a chaplain. He's like my family. No matter what happened in my life, he's been there. He has created a different kind of clinical chaplaincy that really supports the staff. I think that is visionary and I think that is differentiator for most organizations. Jeff's mother was a nurse, an RN, a Grady graduate. And, um, and I think through her, he learned that you meet the patient and the family members where they are. And Jeff is very conscientious of other people. He can read people. He can, and just through talking to them, decipher what is it this person needs. But he's not gonna, he's not one to jump in and fix it. Some of our students, especially who have come from the church, from business, they're used to coming in and saying, okay, let's do this, 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 and let's fix this. But this is not a fixing ministry. It's a presence ministry to help people in the midst of where they are to try to find what they can to, again, find that ground underneath them again or find their faith again or whatever. We can't do that for them, but we're here to help. I guess maybe sometimes we're called spiritual midwives. I guess you could say that. <laughs> maybe that's what would be this term. <laughs> One of the ministers at First Baptist Florence had just finished a year's residency in clinical pastoral education. And so I had talked to him about that right after he came. But I'd had all these horror stories of people going through that, of all the tension and stuff, and so I didn't do it. But we took a leap. It was really a leap of faith. And we spent two years in Augusta. I uh, served uh, Georgia Regional Hospital there as a student. He came home one day when he was fixing to graduate or finish that program. He says, there's an opening in Opelika, Alabama. And we laughingly said, yeah, go ahead and apply. We'll never get that. And sure enough, they called him up and he, we returned to Opelika and we were there for 13 years before moving to Gainesville, Georgia in 1998. And this was just an answered prayer in a sense because we love the mountains. Because even when we lived in Alabama, um, we come to the mountains all the time. We go camping up here, we go hiking on the trail. Uh, one anniversary, I took my wife on a two-day hike on the Appalachian Trail, and she still stayed married with me. I was very pleased with that. But we just loved this area, and we just felt like it was God's leaning for us to come this way. Everything that has happened tragically in my adulthood with my family, he's been there. In 2004, the day that my second child was born, my dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness. It was a two-year process, and it was very tragic, very traumatic to see what he went through. And shortly after his diagnosis, Jeff was like my comforter, almost, here at work. He was my go-to friend that um, was there to listen to, to pray with me, to pray for me, to pray for my dad, and sometimes just to sit, not have to talk. At the end of my dad's life, um, we made the decision to put him um, on hospice care, and Jeff was right there with my family, um, even like following us out of the hospital with my dad. He's just to comfort, he's always comforted. He is a, has a calming effect. And I don't know that I know anyone as genuine as Jeff. Jeff has been something solid that we could grab onto in a time of distress. He just exudes calmness and serenity in any situation, and you always want him on your team. And that's, he gets pulled in a lot of different directions because we all want him on our team. When we came to uh, Gainesville, Georgia, he was the only pastoral care director of one department and he had a secretary and uh, he was available 24 hours a day. Many of Christmases and Thanksgivings he would have to, oh I gotta go, I'll be back later, save me some supper or save me lunch or whatever or I'll be back as soon as I can. I remember one Christmas he was gone three or four times, he'd get back to the house and something else would happen and he would go back. Um, but he would never say no, he cared about the patients and the families that were there. It was Jeff's vision to create this clinical pastoral education program, a 
believe we have over 60 chaplains, uh, volunteer, uh, contract, and full-time employees. We cover the Northeast Georgia Medical Center Gainesville campus and the Brazelton campus 24 hours a day. There's always a chaplain in the building. That has been a, a great asset for our staff so that they don't have to worry about trying to call somebody in. There's always somebody here. And it also says a lot about our administration that sees that we're really a community hospital and we got to meet the needs of our community. So I'm very grateful for that. Jeff is really focused on uh, helping us uh, develop our skills in, in dealing with ethical dilemmas and uh, building the competency with our ethics committee by uh, continuous education and partnerships. So as we uh, see more and more complex cases and face these ethical dilemmas, we've increased and improved our own capabilities to uh, deal with those. Respecting choices sort of grew out of that. I had seen for years families caught in a terrible situation where they had to make decisions they weren't prepared to make for their loved one. And so the Respecting Choices program is to have uh, patients' uh, wishes known in, in developing a more standard approach to advanced directives. Jeff realizing and seeing some of the situations he witnesses through traumas and through ICU events, he saw a need for that program to be, to be more robust in our organization so that when people do come in, that they have the, the tools that they need to get the care that they want and the care that they deserve. In the midst of the children of Israel being in exile, the prophet Isaiah was told by the Lord to comfort the people. I think that's what we should do. Jeff, I was so excited when I heard about your winning the Georgia Hospital Association's Hospital Hero Award and it couldn't happen to a better person. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The staff thanks you and our patients thank you. Jeff, I want you to know how much I love you and how happy I am that you have received this award. award and that I, I can't think of a more deserving person than you for this award. And I'm so honored to have been asked to speak on your behalf. Congratulations. Jeff, congratulations on this honor. I can think of no one who deserves it more. Jeff, it's been a long time that we've been together and through these years it's been a privilege to watch you grow and to watch you handle many different kinds of situations. I'm very proud of who you have become as I was proud of you when you started uh, and very grateful for being allowed to be your wife and to support you through your ministry.